Well, hello. Um, I'm with Howard Ward. He is the design engineer of the Taskable Balances. And so we're here at Aerophysics in Corona. And we're here with Howard Ward, and he's going to have a number of questions about balances. But I guess the first question I had, um, what got you into engineering, and why into balances? Oh, I got there by a, a roundabout way, really. Part of it being when I spent two years in the Army, and I was an aircraft mechanic. But uh, Elmer, my brother, mm -hmm. was at Caltech at, at that time, and he worked in the wind tunnel. Okay. And I used to go to Caltech just to get to see the wind tunnel working and see the guy working there. Oh. And uh, it was uh, very interesting. I, I liked that type of thing. Mm -hmm. I, I became a machinist and then uh, went from there to a journeyman machinist and the whole series of things you normally do to get what you want to get to. But in the late 50s, I decided I uh, needed to get more education. And uh, my brother is a Caltech graduate, mm -hmm. and he kept harping on me to <laughs> go, okay. go get more education. <laughs> and uh, then we heard about uh, a place in LA which uh, basically took in guys who were working in engineering, but they had no degrees. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they are an accredited school and everything, and they got two campuses and everything else. But, but mostly uh, there was guys from uh, all of the aircraft companies there. Okay. I guess also that was just the center of the universe for, you know, all the aircraft yeah. uh, business that was going on. Yeah. All of the aircraft, local aircraft companies sent their people there. They wanted them to get their degrees. And uh, then when I graduated, uh, I was of course still working full time too, and going at, at night. Oh my gosh! But uh, when I finished, uh, I got my degree in engineering, and uh, immediately started back to work full time and, and more than full time. <laughs> oh, because now you got the engineering degree, you can do even more in addition. To Machinist overtime work and everything else. So uh, that's that's the way it went, and I just went uh, along. So what field of engineering? Well, basically mechanical engineering. Okay. So why balances? I mean, there's people that get involved, let's say, with aircraft design or landing gear or engines, and then here we have a wind tunnel balance. Um, but, for example, like right here, this is like a, like a, a task balance. Mm -hmm. We got the inner core and the outer shell. Um, but what started you to do this? Uh, was it the influence of the wind tunnels at Caltech? Well, we worked with uh, Caltech quite a bit. But uh, what started it was, um, oh goodness, I can't remember the guy's name. But North American, but he, he's got the patent on it, but it was he and, and my brother who actually worked together mm -hmm. to get the, the patent on it and to okay. develop the balance. Was this, yeah, it's even got a couple, it says U.S. patents, and these are the patent numbers. Yeah, those are some of the patent oh, numbers. Okay. That, that's a very early, early balance, mm -hmm. and now there was a big, long string of patents <laughs> ah, there. Okay. But, uh, Due to these two people, my brother and this other guy, I can't think of his name. Uh, maybe you'll think of it in his, 10 minutes. His name was actually on the patent. And okay. my brother's part of it was that he took the rights to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay. sort of developed it slowly oh. as it came about. And uh, I just, uh, the idea. Mm -hmm was basically really good. Yeah. And the two uh, sleeves for it. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, That's right, too. It's one of the, the eccentricity, if you were to look at the balance, it's not uh, perfectly round. Right. Uh, 
What is the reason for that? <laughs> I knew you were going to ask. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hold it up the way you were looking at it. Mm -hmm. and there you can see the eccentricity and you get that exactly in the right position. And you look in here and look in here. See, this is fairly thin, isn't it? Okay. Turn over here where the screws have to be. Look how much thicker it is. Oh. So that's the reason, is to get the thicker screws in there. You go to a screw that can actually fit in there, you're limited by the strength of the screw. Okay. So some of these balances can hold about a thousand, two thousand pounds. Right. Mm -hmm. They hold quite a bit. Okay. Uh, you know, designs. And also the interactions are quite low. Uh, how'd you manage to do that? Well, that is uh, part of the problem of designing the balance. Mm -hmm. Is you design it for these low interactions by isolating each one. Now, on a single piece balance, you can't isolate everything because everything is solid or it's mixed okay. together. And they're all. Uh, and this is your for, for a two piece balance. And this is the one which has uh, all of the elements. Mm -hmm. And you can see it, 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 the elements here. I wish you got a collection of elements in this one. Yeah, this. This was the one, yeah, this is the, the one, 1. 1.5 inch Mark II balance. So anyway, this was where the whole thing was disassembled. Mm -hmm. uh, so I guess this is what, what a normal or side that's, force bridge? Yeah, that would be probably the, that's probably the normal force bridge. Mm -hmm. But you can see all the flexors that we use. You look here, there's two flexors here. And there's two flexors in this direction. So okay. they are. Mm -hmm. Isolated in each direction, in all four, all four, yeah. four directions, actually, mm -hmm. and that isolates it from the rest of the unit for interactions. If um, you, you can have interactions directly from that element, there's a few interactions mm -hmm. that come out, but you don't get these huge interactions from some slurious interaction that comes in due to the loading that element. Yeah, was well, the uh, eccentricity of the outer, outer mm -hmm. rod and the sleeve. Okay. Because that gave us the room, that was the, our biggest jump, because that gave us the room to have bigger screws put in. Okay. That immediately upped the load until we got to the point where, uh oh, we've upped the load. Now we've got to find the material. Mm -hmm. that will carry that load safely. Mm -hmm. So then we go, went into higher and higher strength steels after that. Okay. So you probably went through a lot of steels. Uh, yes, we did And a lot you of have experiment. all the steel codes memorized after all that work. Yeah, just about. Mm -hmm. 17, 4, 15, 5, Carpenter 455, you know, it goes on and on. Okay. And these are all the highest steels. And we did a lot of testing on them. Mm -hmm. At first, we did testing to make sure they were good, they'd hold it, but they would take the loads, and uh, so we just put excess loads in all directions on them and twisted them and everything else. Then when we got through with that, <coughs> we had to take some and strain gauge them mm -hmm. and see what load they were good for. Okay. In other words, they are, uh, the book says they were up to this the mm -hmm. load specification. Can we go to that safely and, mm -hmm. and beyond so we have a safety factor in there? Mm -hmm. And luckily, the ones like I mentioned were all good. Mm -hmm. so, and so 1958 was the creation of NASA. What was the difference of working with NACA and NASA as far as we were concerned, absolutely no difference. Oh, uh, okay. Everything was the same. Mm -hmm. And we worked with the people in the industry. <coughs> I mentioned that my brother worked with somebody else to, to do the, the patent and everything. Mm -hmm. Well, this other fellow worked for uh, North American Aviation. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but then besides that, Tess, 
well, besides balances, but I also see that they did refrigeration systems and mm -hmm. um, motors and turbo machinery. And yeah, like, right. how did you guys manage to do all this stuff when just doing balances was enough work <laughs> as it is? Well, we, we grew and grew and grew. And at one time we had uh, a, a little industrial center. I think we had 21 buildings in there. Okay. Belonged to us. Wow. And then uh, eventually we moved out and went to uh, one big building. Mm -hmm. But uh, <clears throat> for the read, but this is uh, oh, this is the balance. Yes. But at, uh, well, the refrigeration units that were made mm -hmm. for aircraft, mm -hmm. and uh, they, the mo electric motors. Mm -hmm. Basically, we were for aircraft use, and I used to design the gearbox for some of the, the motors because they were high horsepower. Those okay. motors, mm -hmm. motors that fit in the palm of your hand, would produce 20 horsepower. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> those are water cool. Mm -hmm. They're water cool motors. Okay, so that's what it is. But I imagine you just use the same. So then it comes back. Why the name Task? Engineering is our task. Okay, that was the original thing. Mm. But then later it became Able. Yeah, that's when Able broke off from Task. Okay, my, my brother started Able. I he see. was the one that started the other company. Mm -hmm. And Abel uh, was a new company that will be made along the lines of the old company. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, we were in business for 20 some years. Yeah. And it grew up from you know, a little place to two big buildings and everything. Again, it was a, a growth thing. Mm -hmm. Because like the fools <laughs> that they some people get, they got rid of the good people. Oh. And they knew, the, knew how to get the horsepower out of the motors and built good, well, the, the whole balance group left. Oh, okay. They were all together. And so when the balance group left, <laughs> Did, did they go with, so did did they go someplace else besides Abel? No, basically. Okay. No. Oh, so so they're still with Abel. They, they, they stayed with with uh, Abel and, uh, instead of uh, Task. Okay. And they had this little group at Abel, and they went along for years, and then we had another building, and another building, and another building, and mm -hmm. it started out like that again, and then at that time, and then we got to a, a point where he said, well, we, we can't do it this way. And he ran across a good deal and had mm -hmm. two buildings for sale. Mm -hmm. And he bought those. And okay. then all, everything was moved into the first building, and the second building was yeah. closed, uh, rented out to other people. Mm -hmm. okay. And then later on, we needed a whole thing. So we had to move them out, and we took the, the, the second building. That's the way they got into lots of things. But going back when you mentioned that there was like the best machinists that worked on these balances, mm -hmm. actually, what makes a good machinist? How are these? How do you train these people and keep them? Well, I, we didn't actually have a training program or anything mm -hmm. for the machinists because. To start with, we got the highest paid machinists, which are normally the best ones you could buy. Okay. <laughs> and uh, so we kept them by having wages were, that were high, as high, or maybe slightly higher than the prevailing wages out in big, yes. big industry. Mm -hmm. uh, it was. Uh, all right, the system worked pretty good. Uh, we would train only as far as what they were working on. In other oh, words, yeah. if they were not used to working with 15.5, 17.4 material or something mm -hmm. like that, uh, then they would be doing the pieces that were uh, made out of that material first 
until they got used to it because it does take a different touch on the machine. Yeah. Well, you mentioned about, you know, there's like an apprentice program and then you work your way up the journeyman. So I think a yeah. lot of these would, you know, do if that. They were, they recognized as a valuable mm -hmm. machinist and everything. Then you were slowly raised up and, and you got tougher and tougher assignments. Mm -hmm. And the toughest assignment was the uh, machining of the wind tunnel balance. Okay. So we end up looking at this particular balance. We got the inner cord outer sleeve. Uh, which part would it be the most difficult? Um, like, could you point to the inner cord? Mm -hmm. You got the sting. Okay. That is a real close tolerance. I see. That's the, the taper. The final taper is ground on there. Mm -hmm. But you had to have everything correct first. Oh. And that holds the balance like this, and mm -hmm. everything else is concentric to that sting. Okay. For us on a wind tunnel test we had a few years ago. So they used the, uh, this balance that the last time it was used was back in the 1960s for a control and stability test. And it, the balance experienced a lot of uh, dynamics. And someone said, this balance basically has only about 80 more hours of useful time, and then it's going to break. And we end up using the balance for far more, mm -hmm. you know, wind tunnel occupancy hours. So you shook your head. There's no such thing you can say, okay, up to 80 hours and the balance is going to break. The only way that you'll break it is if you overload it. Okay. I mean, the usage won't do it. So you don't have well, like they're more built dy for a dy long dy life. dynamic. There isn't where if you have like high balance dynamics, would that shorten its... Um, only with, because it would be exceeding its limit in that range, yeah. Doing that would do it. Okay. It'll remember on it, uh, mm -hmm. although uh, as soon as a new material comes out, boy, we grab it right away and we get oh. a chunk from the manufacturer okay. and start machining test pieces out of it and oh. try and destroy it and overload it and everything else and then make sure it works good under temperature. So that sounds like you have to really stay on top of the different uh, sure. materials and sure. steels oh, yes. that are coming out on that. Okay, uh, so let me see a what? whole file of, of books on different materials, you know, oh. coming from manufacturers. Every time they came out with a new one, they send me mm -hmm. a book, and then I ask for a test piece. One time I yeah. got a test piece that long, mm. and I asked, I said, well, send me one I can use, and they said, it, uh, there is none. Oh. We haven't made one yet. And, and, and you know, it takes orders from the company to make up this thing. He says, go ahead and use that. So we made a little element out of it mm. and, and did it that way. Well, okay. So I imagine when a new material comes out, I guess everybody in the, in, in the business, you know, wants a, yeah. and you have to hurry up and grab yeah. that or else. Material inspection. <laughs> oh, okay. Or what's called inspection. That is it. This destruction yeah. testing and everything else. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then actually here's a, why the Mark name, like <laughs> Mark II and Mark IV as, i just kind that, of curious. Well, it's my brother's idea. Okay. Uh, I finally found out where that came from many years ago. Mm -hmm. uh, there are lots of things around. There, there's Mark numbers when you're numbering them. It's a Mark 55 or mm -hmm. it's a Mark 70. You know, it has nothing to do with balances or anything else that I can find okay. out. It's just a mark number, <coughs> excuse me, which is assigned to the material or part or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And with us, it was the mark number uh, defined the balance, and, and that ch could change in size and load range and everything else. Mm -hmm. But then the number that came after it told you what it was and the load range and size. Yeah. Okay. Like somebody say, okay, this is a half inch mark five. 
Okay, you mark five and the gate you look into the book and you would tell them the whole the whole loan range, so the whole balance mm -hmm. and uh, everything else that was critical to it. Yeah. And, you know, and when you're socking the pin in, um, how much you know do you want to apply? <laughs> no, but, but but in terms of the slide hammer, uh, yeah, just, just force, a, just a tap. You're not you're not slamming. It okay. In. All you need is a tap. What really does it is if you have a pin here and another one over here. Mm -hmm. That's the safe way. You can have one a little loose, and okay. the other one will compensate for it. It'll put put a positive load mm -hmm. on it, and you'll get a compensation. Okay. It'll, the balance will feel real tight, and it, it really always should use at least two pins 180 degrees apart. Now a lot of times we use one pin. I know, that's the bad part. And it's bad because of why? You get cocking moments on the pin. But you're using one pin and it's taking all the load and it's banging back and forth a little bit, pretty soon more banging back and forth as the balance and the model move. Okay. And then when you get it apart, that hole no longer is round. It's mm -hmm. sort of oblong and it's oversized now. Oh. And then that well then you can go to the other side, but you always have to put it in starting mm -hmm. on the side that's the thickest. Okay. Deflect. Because they had to deflect for the load that they trying to read, but it would stick and it would do all kinds of things. Oh. So, so imagine I, this water balance is actually quite a bit bad. Yeah, you so know. what I did is just uh, do a simple thing on it. I put the uh, diaphragms at each end and then I had a tank mm -hmm. that was saved from something, I don't know. And I do all kinds of tests with the, just mm -hmm. dropping the elements yeah. in there and holding one end out and Running, running the pressure up, on, up and down in the tank, and by golly, it didn't have any effect on it. Mm. So then my brother said, well, why don't you go ahead and patent that? And mm. I said, oh, no, 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 I don't want to patent that. I mean, that, that's, you know, that's got to be an old theory mm. to work on it. But it turns out nobody had a patent on that? Nobody had a patent on it. And the only Thing that, that they set in that you know where they have to mm -hmm. they have to send something in that says oh yeah this is already a patent and it can have nothing to do with it mm -hmm. well that's what happened on this one and I wrote just a little two or three mm -hmm. paragraphs on why it was not it and sent it back in and everybody says oh you won't get that for another year and a half two years and about two and a half months later here comes the patent <laughs> oh. <laughs> this thing had never been patented. Okay. Well, you got yourself in there. So actually, come to the question, do you ever, you know, make a lot of money from all these patents? No. Okay. Not really. Mm -hmm. No, uh, most of it is a patent that we need to save our position of what we're doing. Okay. Um, there. Some little thing that might go to somebody else and he could use it to expand something, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, was it a, was it a, a lot of work or is it bureaucratic filing for a patent? It's uh, not work per se. It's more bureaucratic, but there's a lot of drawings and pictures of it assembled and disassembled and everything else that you have to send mm -hmm. in. Okay. Usually you send it in and there's about 20 or 30 pages that goes with it. And yet they got the explanation, and of course it's the patent attorney, which actually, actually compiles everything and sends it. Oh, out. okay. Okay. So anyway, going back to task balance, let's say if you had to do it all over again, mm -hmm. what differences, if any, would you how you would design these, you know, these uh, two piece balances in general? Looking back on it, I'd say that starting from the beginning, we made so many advances on the balance that we just couldn't do it any better. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Maybe we could take that system. Okay. You know, like you see the one over there. Well, mm -hmm. that, that's that's the simple one. That's mm -hmm. the one where we made it. Went from a concentric balance mm -hmm. to an eccentric balance. As soon yes. as the load got up to the point where had, you had to put bigger screws in, there was no choice. No. We were forced into it. Mm -hmm. And I think it was one where somebody said, well, we got to get a bigger screw in there. And somebody else said, yeah, why don't we put an eccentricity in it? Mm -hmm. And everybody said, oh, that, oh, that might try. Why don't you figure it out? No. You know, it, it wasn't anything where we worked for weeks or, or mm -hmm. anything like that to see which way it was. So it sounds like a lot of these designs kind of came about that, where people would come up with ideas and try this and that, and that's it. going back and forth. And uh, way. so I imagine there's probably like a lot of, you know, design issues. Perhaps not all of it's really on paper, mm -hmm. um, as it tends to kind of go through this iteration process. Sometimes you, you talk to the draftsman or yourself and you say, blow it up 20 times size. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, because we want to be sure we got that clearance in there. And the guy would make up a drawing and, oh yeah, it looks good. But it only can move that far. Well. <laughs> to put those on the Aerophysics website, mm -hmm. so kind of give a good overall view. So, but in terms of balances, what we'd like to have you is to get your autograph to our Palcal lab for our sheets. Oh, good heavens. Well, uh, I'm used to writing with this kind of pen. Okay. Can you make it out? Oh, this is perfectly good. In fact, you know what? It looks like you're the right on your engineering drawings. Okay, well here with uh, Howard Board, the designer of the task able balances uh, with this interview uh, here at Aerophysics. Uh, so, okay, well thank you very much again. Thank All you. Right, okay, thanks.